Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. Welcome to MISCA 2019. Uh, this is an informational meeting for our coaches and parents to kind of get um, a little bit of an understanding of what has changed for the year and also for new coaches and parents to understand uh, a little bit about what MISCA is all about, um, a little bit of an orientation. So some of this may be repetitive to so some coaches that have been on our coaches calls this year so far. Um, but hopefully uh, it'll still be informative and you'll uh, walk away with something. So uh, just some housekeeping. Uh, on the GoToWebinar box, uh, you should see a button for questions. Um, it's called the questions box. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type your question in there. Uh, we're not going to open up the microphones or the, the phones tonight. Um, so it'll just be via um, messaging. So if you could please type in your questions uh, in that box, I will get to them hopefully throughout the webinar. If not, I will do all the questions at the end. Um, so if I don't answer your question, uh, hold on and we'll get to a Q&A session at the end of the call. Um, I do want to thank iDashboards. They are allowing us to use their GoToWebinar tonight. Um, so you may have gotten uh, when you signed up for the webinar, you may have visited a website called iDashboards. They're one of our sponsors. Um, and they're allowing us to use their, um, their license of GoToWebinar so that we can host this uh, session tonight. So just a little bit of an intro if you're not sure who I am. Uh, my name is Sean Warren. I've been involved with MISCA since 2012, and I've served as the president of our board since 2016. Um, recently, we moved to a league model in the last couple of years, and so now I serve as our league director as well. Um, in the nonprofit world, that's usually like an executive director, um, and that's pretty much uh, how I serve um, on the day-to-day -day operations throughout the year, as well as the race director on race day. Um, so I've kind of done it all. I've worn all the hats of MISCA since 2012, um, coming in, kind of focusing on marketing and uh, you know helping out at the races, um, and then now kind of being responsible for the organizational efforts um, that we do throughout the year. So what we're going to cover tonight, uh, we're going to go over a little bit about what MISCA is all about, our mission, history, and growth. We're going to talk about what it means to be a league uh, and what the structure of MISCA is currently. Uh, we'll go through what our, who our current teams are and thank them for signing up uh, diligently this year. We'll go through our rule changes that we've seen since 2018, uh, as well as provide uh, links to the rule book in case you're not familiar. We'll cover our rider categories. There are some changes there that you will see in the rule changes. We'll go over our race schedule and fees, uh, a call for volunteers, cover our upcoming events, and then also end with additional Q&A. So if I don't answer your question again throughout the session, I will answer it at the end. And feel free to kind of bombard me with questions there at the end too. Totally fine. So let's talk a little bit about MISCA, uh, what, why we're here and where we've been uh, and kind of where we're going. So the, the mission of MISCA is to establish and maintain safe quality scholastic cycling programs. And the way that we do that or accomplish that mission is through helping to organize um, cycling clubs and teams throughout the state. Uh, developing an interscholastic competition series, which is our D&D Bicycles race series. And then also we promote the value of cycling to our youth, uh, because we know that cycling is a lifelong sport, not just something that you might do you know, in elementary school, uh, middle school, or high school. You can do it forever, uh, as I'm sure most of the people on the call are familiar with, because you're probably an adult who likes the mountain bike um, or cycle in general. So kind of breaking that down a little bit uh, more generally, um, MISCA is focused on the coordination of youth mountain biking teams and races throughout Michigan for elementary, middle, and high school age students. We were founded in 2010 under the umbrella of the Michigan Mountain Biking Association, and we've been an independent 501c3 away from the MMBA since 2012. Um, recently, we were upgraded to a gold level on GuideStar uh, for our level of transparency. So if you're from, interested in our financials or anything like that, you can see all that information on GuideStar. Um, and then also we are a 29 top rated 
um, great nonprofit. So we've had some awesome people that went on to that great nonprofit site and left us some feedback um, and uh, our rating is high enough to be considered a great nonprofit for this year. So a little bit of history again. MISCA was founded in 2010 um, by Steve Kinley. Steve is still active with our Lake Orion team, uh, but has stepped away from kind of the uh, management and leadership of the organization as a whole. Um, we've seen a lot of change over the years, even since I've been involved. But in 2010, we had one race, um, and then we kind of bloomed from there, and we're kind of piggybacking on adult races. Um, we got our nonprofit. We started doing USA Cycling sanctioned races. Um, which was kind of our first uh, bit of dipping our toe into the national governing body uh, kind of thing. Um, and then we started doing our own races in 2014 100%, so uh, student-only races, no more adults racing alongside the kids. Um, and also that means that we were promoting our own race series at that point. Um, in 2016, we expanded to the west side, and we're still really trying to push for our west side uh, population. Um, and last year, we molded into a league model and started our coach certification program um, to help fulfill that. Um, so MISCA now offers a professionally run youth-only mountain bike race series with six events spread throughout Lower Michigan. We do a coach certification program, uh, which we'll talk about more later. We put on camps and clinics for students and coaches. Uh, we have a female focus group, our Girls on Bikes uh, committee and program, um, that put on female events uh, to get more girls in the sport. We have youth leadership through a student advisory committee. We offer financial assistance for families uh, where cost is a, is a challenge to entering the sport. And we also offer club insurance for organizations, coaches, and riders who are a part of MISCA. So let's talk a little bit about 2018 and uh, the year that we had. We had a really strong 2018. We had 365 different kids riding for MISCA. Uh, what that means is they didn't all show up to every race, but they registered uh, under our annual registration and were participating with MISCA. That's up from 312 last year, uh, or 2017. And we averaged 255 riders at each race. And that's compared to 198 in 2017. We had six races last year, uh, and that was our most ever, uh, and that's compared to five the year before. Our first year certifying our coaches, uh, we had 150 coaches sign up. We already have more than 20 new coaches signed up this year, so I'm pretty sure we'll hit 200 this year. Um, and I think we're, we're reaching for 450 students to join up this year with an average closer to 300, hopefully. So this is a little bit of our trend of our growth over time. Um, we started really with like a couple teams in 2010, and it grew a little slow uh, as we kind of had some volatility there in the early years. Uh, it's a lot of work to put on MISCA, and uh, uh, there was a lot of work being done by a few people. So it was, you know, we weren't really sure uh, year over year if we were going to have a series or what was going to happen. And so uh, starting in 2015, we really said, okay, we're doing this. It's going to happen, you know in perpetuity. Um, we started scheduling our races way early, far in advance, so that we, everybody had a lot of notice, um, and they could start getting their teams together in the spring, which is really right now when you need to start doing that. Um, so we saw pretty awesome growth uh, going from 2016 to 17, and again, we're on a really good trend in 2018, and I believe in 2019 uh, as well. So let me talk to you a little bit about what MISCA, uh, what our structure looks like, um, and you know what what MISCA is. So uh, MISCA is basically kind of the governing body for the state for youth mountain biking. Um, under MISCA, there are teams, and on a team there are certified coaches, and then also just adults who may not use that word coach, but want to volunteer to help out or ride with their with their kids on the team. We require that each team has a level two or three coach present at every team event. Um, a level two or three coach is first aid and CPR certified, and that's really why we want those uh, more experienced coaches uh, at any event that you're having. And then also each team is required to have a level three coach, um, which is more like your head coach, 
uh, but it doesn't have to be. A lot of teams are going to have a uh, half dozen level three coaches this year, um, but you need to have one level three coach on a team. Uh, you don't have to have a level three at any event necessarily, but they just need to, you know, be on the team uh, to have the, that skill. And then on a team, you're going to have student athletes uh, and coaches. Um, that's Sorry, passed up that. Uh, <laughs> so then we have student, student athletes. Um, and preferably, we have a ratio of one coach to six students at any given time. Um, we do offer, like, where if you're doing off-bike uh, skills or conditioning, where maybe it'll be like a one-to-eight ratio. But you always want to have at least two coaches present at any given time as well. And then students are not required to join the team to participate in MISCA. Uh, they can do the races and do camps and clinics and things like that without without joining a team necessarily, uh, but they still need to require MISCA, or still need to register for MISCA in order to participate um, in any of our events. So what does it mean to become an official MISCA team? Um, first, you need to register your team. So it is a $150 annual fee. It covers your insurance and access to our kind of team management system. Um, Additionally, you, that is the only way that you're eligible for team awards. Uh, so to be you know, considered for any awards at any of our um, events, you have to be a registered team. So uh, coaches and riders must register with that team. Um, and then team uh, registration is open today. So if you go to miscabike.org slash register and you don't see um, and your team is not available, uh, make sure you go ahead and register your team now so that when uh, kids and parents start registering, they see your team on the list of available um, organizations to join. Um, if you visit miscabike.org slash resources, there's a bunch of really good documents, so you should look at that. But there's team budgets and a lot of tips to help you get started if you're a new team. Uh, additionally, there's links out to the National Interscholastic Cycling Association webpage. And we're not affiliated with them, but they have tons of good material. Um, they've been around since 2009, so a very similar time period. But they have a, you know, a much larger staff and a whole bunch of states that have gotten together to put together a lot of content uh, that you can benefit from. So to become a coach, uh, you'll start with a level one certification. Uh, in order to do this, you do pay a fee. It's $30 per year to be the coach. It covers. Um, pretty much everything you see on the screen. Uh, so you have to be 18 years old. Uh, but what that $30 covers is your background check. Um, there, there's an online quiz that you're going to do for concussion. Um, and that's part of our online system. Um, and really, a lot of uh, what goes into that coaching fee is the background check and then insurance for the organization um, that covers all of our coaches. And only registered coaches are covered with MISCA. And we only allow registered coaches to ride um, in any team activity. Um, so you want to make sure that you're registered before you show up to like a team practice or something like that. You'll also want to attend this webinar. So if you're listening to my voice, you've got that kind of in the bag. Um, you can see the full details at miscabike.org slash coach. Uh, there's a lot of details there and all the other uh, requirements for levels two and three. Um, and then when you're ready to sign up, go ahead and go to miscabike.org slash register. To step up to a level two coach, you're going to do all the same things that you saw in level one, except for now you must be 21 years old. Uh, you're, and now you have field hours, um, which I'll talk about in a moment, but you have 30 hours required. That's basically a student contact uh, and a mountain bike coaching um, scenario uh, where you'll be an active coach for 30 hours before you step up to that level two. You'll need first aid and CPR in-person certifications. And you'll also need to attend one of our ride-leading uh, coaches clinics, which we are offering for free. And we have an upcoming clinic on May 11th. It's at Wallfield Park, um, and that's near Grand Rapids. It's in Kent County. The full details, again, you can go to miscabike.org slash coach. And if you want to register for that clinic or as a level two coach, you can do that um, at that register link. And then level three coaches are one step up from that. Uh, same idea, except for you need 60 hours of contact with, uh, with youth in a mountain biking setting. Um, and you also need basic mountain biking skills clinics uh, completed. 
So uh, talking about the field hours, coaches should be reporting their field hours. So anytime they're doing a, a practice or a clinic uh, or even this webinar, going to races in a supporting fashion, they should be going to miscabike.org slash, um, actually you can go to slash hours. It's a little bit easier of a link. Um, I thought I had that on here. So it's miscabike.org slash hours and you can submit your field hours. I recommend that at the end of every practice that you have or group ride, um, all the coaches sync up at the end, kind of talk about what went well, uh, what could have gone better. And when you're doing that, get on the phone and type in your hours that you did that day. Um, that'll just keep it so that at the end of the year, you're not trying to backfill all that time because it is a one, one submission per date um, application. It's like a form that you need to fill out. Um, and uh, and again, level two coaches are required to have 30 hours, level three coaches are 60 hours, and those are annual. So at the end of every year, we're going to reset that clock on how many hours that you've earned um, going into the, the following year. So if you go to miscabike.org slash coach, you're going to see a table that looks a lot like this. Um, it's a little bit easier to understand side by side kind of what's required um, and available to you through the different coaching levels. So check that out. Um, we already talked about this. So I'll talk about this page. Um, and this is what you can do through these different levels of coaching. Um, so kind of the big, the big things are you can't, um, you can't ride with the team in a leading fashion as a level one coach. You're going to need that, that ride guide clinic um, to, to move up to the level two in order to kind of lead a group ride. Um, and every group at a practice or group ride should have a ride leader with the group um, who understands uh, what's necessary, the emergency protocol, has first aid CPR, so if something does happen, somebody's with the group at all times who can take care of that situation. And then to teach mountain bike handling skills, we're going to want you to go through the MISCA certification course uh, to be that level three coach. Now, we do allow um, you to have, if you have certifications from other organizations like BICP, used to be IMBA, um, or NICA, or the Professional Mountain Biking Institute, um, if you have a certification from those groups, a level one, um, that will far uh, surpass our level three requirements. And so we will waive our um, ride guide and the teaching mountain biking skills clinics if you have any of those certifications. And currently we don't have an expiration date on those clinics um, or your certification from somewhere else. Um, so if you have one, you can you can bring it with you. Uh, and right now we are not uh, expiring any of those. So we talked about kind of how to, how to start a team, how to become a coach, well, what about how to sign up your kid? Um, or if you're um, a student on the call, how do you get involved? So registration is an annual fee. It's $50. Um, and then you can find a team. When you register, it'll be an option in the dropdown. You can also go to miscabike.org slash teams, and you can see a list of all the teams, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But if you click on the map, you will see contact information for all of the teams. And so you can find a team in your area contact the coach, and then uh, figure out how to get involved with that team directly. Um, again, registration is open now, so you can sign up today um, as a rider. Uh, just as a note, you do have to have a parent sign you up to be part of MISCA. Um, so there are some waivers and things like that, medical information that needs to get filled out in the beginning. Um, and so you'll have to have your parent and enroll you in the program. We have additional programs for student athletes as well, so if you're not um, if you don't necessarily want to race, but you do want to be part of MISCA, um, first off, we have scholarships available. So if you have a financial concern there with the $50 or any of the race fees, um, we pretty much approve 100% of applicants that we get. Um, you can fill out a form at miscabike.org slash scholarship. We have a student advisory committee. Um, if you go to, again, the website, um, you can kind of see more information on that. But we have a group of five um, youth who are everywhere from elementary school through high school who are helping us kind of guide um, some decisions that we make and giving us feedback and uh, working on some projects with the organization. We have that More Girls on Bikes program that I mentioned, uh, which is a female-focused group uh, where we just do girls-only events um, to kind of, uh, you know, alleviate any of that pressure um, or anything like that that there might be out there. Um, so it, they're led by female coaches, 
um, and only girls are, uh, are allowed on the rides and things like that. You can also be like a leader on the team. So there's often team captains or team managers. Um, you can be in charge of equipment, making sure everyone's bikes are in good shape um, as a mechanic, um, and you know just general equipment needs that might be there. Um, and then also there's a lot of other jobs that need to be done on a team, like um, like having social events or posting on social media or making sure everyone knows when they're supposed to be where. So here's a list of our current teams uh, that we currently have signed up with MISCA. Um, actually, I <laughs> want to talk first about what our different teams mean before I went into um, where they're at and uh, what their names are. So we have two different team types with MISCA, scholastic teams and composite teams. Scholastic teams are full-time students from the same school. It could be a public school, it could be a private school, it doesn't matter. Um, and basically, if you're eligible to participate in that school's sports, then you're eligible to participate on that scholastic team. So we understand there are charter schools and homeschool uh, kids who are allowed sometimes to participate in a, in a local public school. Um, we honor the same, the same rules as whatever school district that they are a part of. Um, additionally, we have composite teams, so it's, it's a little bit harder to start a scholastic team a lot of times, and it might be hard to find, you know, more than four kids that mountain bike at a school. So a lot of times what we do is we'll start composite teams through a bike shop or other youth organizations, and the composite team can pull kids from any school, um, any area, just to get kids together and riding uh, together. Um, and we have high school and middle school teams. Our high school teams, for scoring purposes, they are split, scholastic and composite. For scoring purposes, we understand middle school is even a little bit harder to get, you know, a certain number of kids together. And a lot of kids, um, a lot of school districts have multiple middle schools, but maybe not multiple high schools. Um, and so the middle school teams are always composite. Um, even if a, if, a, if a team qualifies as scholastic, if all the kids are from the same school, um, it still technically is a composite team. We don't we don't separate them uh, for points purposes. The teams that are red on the map are our composite teams, so anybody can join those teams. And the teams that are in the gray um, that look like school children walking are our scholastic teams. And the scholastic teams are typically one school only. Often the scholastic teams will still allow outsiders to practice with them um, and. Uh, so you can still like join their practices, kind of be part of the team on race day and all that, uh, but you just won't score for the team as far as points go. And we'll just make sure that we know who those people are um, so that we don't, we don't score them. Okay, so here are our current teams. Um, kind of our, uh, our most competitive team right now, our Scholastic, is Brighton Area Schools. Um, over the last five years, I think they've kind of sweeped that uh, team championship. We have Brother Rice, Detroit Catholic Central, and St. Catherine Academy. Because um, Detroit Catholic Central is an all-boys school, they actually team up with St. Catherine Academy to be able to fulfill an entire team. Detroit Country Day, Huron Valley United, KLM Coldstone, Lake Orion Schools, Northville Schools, Orange Crush, which is through the psychotherapy bike shop, um, they were teamed up with the Metro Detroit Mountain Bikers to, to put together a composite team. The Racing Greyhounds, which is the Cycle to Fitness bike shop. Rochester High School is our uh, brand new team. South Lion Youth Cycling. Team Green, which is through Fraser Bicycle. The West Michigan Coyotes. And Wheels in Motion. So we have several rule changes from last year. Every year we kind of evolve. Um, where we've been and where we're going, and we kind of um, get feedback. It's really hard to make changes in the middle of the year, so we kind of listen to all that feedback throughout the year. We do a survey at the end of the year, and we take all that information and try to make some better rules or, um, you know, add new categories and that kind of thing. So current rules are published online now. You can go to miscabike.org slash rules. And uh, you can get those, um, those rules in their, in their entirety. Um, additionally, just as a note, it is our responsibility as coaches and parents to ensure that the students understand the rules. 
Um, we're never going to be able to read every rule to the kids on race day, um, nor would any of the kids listen to us if we did do that. Uh, so just make sure that you are talking through rules that they need to know. Often, most of it is common sense, and there may be some little things, nuances that they just need to know um, uh, when getting out there. So one of our big changes was our elementary categories. Actually, this isn't big. Um, one of the, uh, I wouldn't call it a big change, but it was kind of a big issue um, that we had. We kind of went through three different um, three different answers on this one before we came to the final conclusion here that we that we decided on. So in 2018, we only allowed grades four and five to race in the upper elementary category, and they would always do typically two laps, which is the same as lower elementary, same um, skill level is kind of like what we called it. Um, and lower elementary was grades three and under. Again, they typically did the same two laps. And, but we recognize there's a pretty wide gap in skill level between a 10-year-old fifth grader and uh, a five-year-old or even four-year-old elementary rider. Um, and some riders could not complete two laps that were the younger riders typically. Um, and the, some of the older kids were done really fast. And even some of the lower elementary would be done very fast um, like an upper elementary kid would. Um, so we understand there's a, there's a skill gap there and there's a, a little bit of a challenge. So what we're doing now in 2019 is we are allowing the grades three and under to race up into the upper elementary category. So probably if you raced uh, grades three and under or lower last year, you'll probably want to race upper this year, even if you're not in grades uh, four and five. Um, and that's maybe because the lower is only going to do one lap this year. So if you were completing all the races last year and you've been working on skills throughout the year, you're probably going to be ready to go for the upper elementary category. You won't be required to move up ever, uh, but you know, you'll know you only be doing one lap in the lower elementary category. Okay, outside assistance, um, this one is a, a pretty big change. So <clears throat> before, no adults could touch an active racer's bike. Riders had to carry their own tools, and active racers could always help each other with mechanical issues. Um, now, those, uh, the first two, the carrying your own tools and no adults, that didn't apply to our elementary categories, so nothing really changes for elementary. Um, the bigger changes are going to be for middle school through uh, JV. So in 2019, the way the rule is going to work is that specified adults may help with mechanical issues. This is going to be people like mountain bike patrol, course marshals who are registered with MISCA to volunteer that day. They'll have a course marshal plate on their bike and neutral support, which is usually that D&D tent. There will be no pitting allowed, and there is no team mechanics on the course or anything like that. You can't uh, have a coach kind of following your pack with a spare wheel or something. Active racers can continue to help each other with mechanical issues. No change there. Tools and supplies may be shared between riders and the specified adults. So, um, you know, it's definitely going to be faster if you have your own tools on you. You're probably going to hit a hit a five to ten minute time delay waiting for somebody to come who can help you um, if you don't have your own stuff. Uh, so it's best to carry your own things and to be trained on mechanicals. But we understand that, you know, some of our beginner level categories were not quite there. Um, and, uh, and even the JV, it might be their first year really racing. Um, and so we needed to loosen this rule. Now, that's, the, that's the, the way it works for everybody except for varsity. Varsity can have, um, if you have help from an adult or an inactive racer, it will result in a 15-minute penalty. Before, it would have been a disqualification to have anybody else touch your bike. Um, and so now it will be a 15-minute time penalty, so a little bit of a loosening there. And active racers are still allowed to help. And that includes tool and supply sharing without a penalty. Um, it was a little bit vague before if tool and supply sharing was allowed. Um, so people would like throw something on the ground, and technically, you know, they didn't, you know, you know, it was very vague. Um, so now the tool and supply sharing is allowed um, between all active racers. Um, okay. Another kind of major change is that we're splitting. Some of our crowded categories by grade. 
Okay. There was a question that came in. Um, does varsity get a penalty if a course marshal helps? And the answer there is yes. So even the specified adults um, are not allowed to help the varsity racer without penalty. So help from any adult or an inactive racer will be that 15 minute penalty. All right, back into the splitting the crowd, the crowded categories. So we're recognizing that some of our categories are growing faster than others, uh, specifically middle school, novice, and junior varsity boys. The junior varsity boys has always been a huge category. It's really one of the reasons why we created the novice, the novice category or beginner category a few years ago. And um, in 2019, we're splitting it up uh, even more. So we're going to split each of those categories into two and we're basing it on grade level. Um, so in middle school, there's going to be a female category, which is for all grades six through eight, and there will be two different male categories, one for sixth through seventh grade and one for eighth grade. In novice, the same idea, there will be one ninth through twelfth grade novice category for the girls, and there will be two categories for the boys, one for ninth graders and one through for 10 through 12th. In junior varsity, same idea, the girls 9th through 12th grade, and then you're going to have the boys 9th and 10th grade, and then 11th and 12th grade will be split. Now they're going to have, it's a totally separate category, so we had 14 racing categories before, we're going to have 17 racing categories in 2019. Um, we're getting up there, uh, and just a kind of a quick note on, um, on kind of how random the grade levels are. Uh, we looked at the number of kids in these different grades, and that's why we split them. So basically half of all of the novice riders were ninth graders, which is to be expected because it's a, usually a first year rider um, or a beginner level rider. Um, and as you, you know, grow and, and are in the, the later years of school, um, you have been riding for a few years typically uh, because most of our teams in the schools at least have been around um, for a few years. So. Okay, another question of if they can ride up a grade, uh, and the answer there is yes. Um, so the, let's see, yeah, it's just yes. So basically if you're a JV 10th grader, you can choose to ride in the 9 to 10 or the 11 and 12, but if you're an 11th grader, you have to ride in the 11 to 12th grade, and it's the same in all the other categories too. A 9th grade novice can choose to ride up into that 9th or 10th to 12th grade if they'd like. And another question, um, is there still an advanced middle school? And the answer there is yes. So we are only adding categories. We didn't remove any. Um, so we're going from the 14, adding three new ones to be at 17 categories now. <clears throat> and I'll show all the categories in a, in a few slides. In order to add new categories, um, we also needed to adjust our points tables. Um, there was some issues with advanced middle school and middle school last year, so we changed that up. Additionally, allowing a lower elementary to move up into upper means that the point levels have to be different. Um, and also, our elementary and middle school points were actually the same before. Um, I'm not sure why that was, but we changed that so that they're not like that anymore. <clears throat> this year, we're going to have a one foot down rule at the starting line. We had an issue where we had a couple kids almost crash at the starting line and they kind of held up some riders that were behind them uh, because they were holding on to each other. So we're instituting that rule that you have to have one foot down. You can't clip into both pedals before uh, the start is announced. If you do that, you will have to wait until the pack clears out and then you can start the ride. Um, we're also instituting a formal protest procedure. So uh, one individual race official um, determinations are going to be final, and if you have a protest that may be reviewed by a panel of race officials, if immediately requested uh, from, the, from the race official who, uh, who gave you a decision. We're also adding infractions for inappropriate language or conduct. This is pretty, um, pretty normal at youth sports uh, and in general, uh, but fair play and respectful, kind, supportive behavior is expected of all student athletes. Profanity in any situation is not acceptable. Threatening or bullying officials, other riders, spectators, or anyone involved with MISCA or an event regarding protests 
may result in penalties. Um, and then the penalties are cumulative throughout the year. So um, we'll be keeping track of if you had a penalty and um, and in applying the proper penalty. Now, this does apply to adults and students. So you know we have had coaches who have gotten into arguments or coaches or parents who have argued with me or other officials. Um, and um, as long as things are civil and we're trying to work out a resolution, there's no problem. But profanity or bullying or threatening or something like that will not be tolerated uh, moving forward. Also, we're just uh, clarifying riders who skipped more than one grade, um, you know, they'll, they should be coming to MISCA um, to be placed in a proper category. Uh, we understand that we are categorizing our, um, our riders by grade level. And, you know, if a rider is maybe held back two years or, um, or is two years ahead so they're young for their grade, um, really young for their grade, they may be more appropriately racing in a different category. And so at a, on a one-off scenario, we will, uh, we will visit that and we'll make a determination based on, um, on that rider's age uh, and skill level. All right, I promised rider categories I would talk about. Um, so we have 17 rider categories today, uh, and we design all of our courses to fit those ages, rider abilities, and skill levels um, <clears throat> to fit those, those 17 categories. So first up, we have our varsity. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the details here, but there's boys and girls in varsity, grades 9 through 12, it's high school category typically. Anybody can race in varsity. Um, if you're a really fast 12-year-old, um, you're welcome to, to try out in varsity uh, if you would like, um, though we recommend that you go through, you know, the normal, um, you know, maybe you start at JV uh, if you think that you can do that, um, which is why we kind of initiated this middle school advance to grow our varsity category as well. So uh, going uh, down, we have the varsity, junior varsity, and our novice. Those are our high school categories. In middle school, you typically are going to start out with middle school and then move into the middle school advanced. The middle school advanced does the same course as our junior varsity, um, which is typically two laps of our more advanced course, um, whereas middle school and novice are doing two laps of a more beginner course, typically, maybe three laps. It depends on the, the venue. Then we have our upper and lower elementary. Um, as I mentioned earlier, upper elementary is going to be doing roughly two laps of a beginner course where a lower elementary will be doing one lap of the beginner course. Um, in addition, I say on here at least 17 categories of competition. That's because at some races we will have an open category. So at Addison Oaks and Fort Custer, which I haven't gotten to the schedule yet, but races one and two of the year, there will be an open category. So it will be a non-competitive um, ride that takes off after the elementary riders leave. Um, for any riders that just want to ride but don't necessarily want to race, um, or maybe they're, they're intimidated or just want to try it out. Um, they can feel free to, to, to enroll in those uh, rides. Um, additionally, we have a balance bike race, which will be at race number three at Brighton Recreation Area. So moving into that race schedule, um, we've got a really nice schedule this year, um, and we've actually been able to maintain the six races again for 2019, uh, Sarah Vano and our um, uh, venue selection committee did a really awesome job this year finding new venues, and we'll talk about that um, too. We had a question here, can parents ride with lower elementary? The answer to that is yes. You do have to register as a volunteer with MISCA for the day, um, just so that we know that you're there and you'll get a, um, a course marshal plate uh, for that ride. Um, typically, you're not going to ride directly with your child during the race, you'll be back probably toward the end of the pack, or if there's a really um, uh, a, a slower rider at the end of the pack, then some of the course marshals may go up in front of the pack because we want you to be more with the main group um, while maybe one or two coaches stick back with that, with that slower rider at the end of the pack. So this is our race schedule for the year. Um, we kind of bounce back and forth between the east side and the west side. Um, which is good. Um, additionally, most of the races this year um, are actually in the Clinton River Area Mountain Bike Association territory. Um, 
and one of those reasons is because we normally do a race at you know, by Tree Farm Lakeshore Park, and that venue is under construction this year, um, so we won't be uh, visiting that, that race course. If you go to the MISC website, you can download this flyer. Um, all of the teams should be getting flyers, and uh, all the bike shops in the, uh, in the state will be getting these flyers to uh, ship to them if they don't already have them. Um, and um, it's kind of a really nice kind of a, a look and gives you kind of all the details you need. On the back, there's a lot of information about MISCA, and on this side is really the race schedule. So every year we really strive to provide the best race venues for our members, and a lot goes into that decision. Um, there is location, trail quality, trail difficulty, staging locations, volunteer requirements, spectator access, um, <clears throat> the, the variety of the venue. We don't want too many hard courses and too many easy courses or all, all hills. Um, and of course, safety. Um, there's also parking. I don't think I said that. Parking is a huge issue. Um, and, uh, and shelter. Um, and, you know, sometimes it comes down to the amount of support that we receive from the park or the venue personnel that we're trying to work with. Uh, if they're being, you know, if they're pushing back and saying they can't really host us, then, you know, it, it gets a little bit harder for us to, to justify trying to do an event there. Um, and it gets really hard to work with them. And we've had, we had a couple of those this year when we were looking for new venues. So this year's calendar, um, we're only actually repeating two venues from last year. So our race director, our course director, uh, Lisa Lotzner, is going to have a lot of fun this year going through all the new race courses. Um, <laughs> uh, we have two brand new venues at Merrill Trail and River Bend. Um, and also we're headed back to Brighton Recreation Area and Bloomer uh, after a couple years off. But our staging and our courses are going to be quite a bit different at those trails. Um, so we'll have to do quite a bit of work there to make those um, work again this year. And after a few years off, we are, I'm sorry, that's uh, Brighton Rack and Bloomer. Um, and then we have two favorites that we probably had from 2018 that we saw positive feedback on. Addison Oaks and Fort Custer uh, were two of the favorites last year. So we're definitely back there to round out the six race schedule. <clears throat> and just a quick note on the Brighton Recreation Area race, um, we actually are um, hosting kind of our first ever camping event at, as well at Brighton Rack. So you can register for a campsite at the Appleton camp, campsite uh, at Brighton Recreation Area. And uh, we reserved all 25 campsites there. And we want to make sure that we fill them all up um, because we don't want uh, cars or vehicles to be coming in and out of the campsite throughout the race because there is a trail crossing through that campground access road. Um, so it should be a lot of fun, though. All the kids and parents and coaches will be there um, pre-riding the course on Saturday night and then, of course, uh, camping out on uh, Saturday night with uh, with a fire and all that good stuff. So our first race is at Addison Oaks, presented by Cycle Therapy. Um, Addison Oaks is our season opener this year again. Um, their park personnel is really awesome, and the trail is always you know awesomely maintained as well. Um, it's a really fun trail. It's a great season opener. It's not too hard. Um, it's pretty fast, so we usually do more laps at Addison or a longer course. Uh, because we can do a lot there. There's also camping available at Addison Oaks. Um, last year we did have some group campsites that popped up, um, and there was a lot of fun uh, had there as well. Fort Custer is our second race. That's near Battle Creek, um, and we're really happy to return to Fort Custer this year. Um, they're pretty easy to work with, um, and, and so we're, we're happy about that. Um, this is originally a farmland, and uh, it turned into an Army training center during World War II. Um, so uh, there's some interesting historical features that you'll run across. Um, one thing that's interesting about this is that the trail does reverse direction every other day. So on Saturday when we pre-ride the course, you're actually riding the course backwards. So important note, take note now, you'll want to pre-ride that course if you want to ride it in the proper race direction. Um, you'll want to ride it on uh, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or Sunday if you were going to go out another day, or if you wanted to ride it before the race. Uh, you could do so. There's also camping at Fort Custer. Um, River, or sorry, Brighton Recreation Area is our third race. Um, we last were there in 2017. Um, it's a pretty awesome uh, course and a great park. There's a beach there. There's also a beach at Fort Custer. Um, this one's presented by Wheels in Motion, uh, thanks to our friends in Ann Arbor. Um, and 
Um, you know, there's a few climbs at Brighton, nothing too crazy. There's quite a few routes, um, but there's a fair amount of flow as well. Uh, so you'll definitely get uh, a chance to test your skill uh, in Brighton Rec. River Bends is presented by Fraser Bicycle. Um, this is a brand new venue for MISCA, and we are really thrilled to partner with Cramba and the Shelby Township uh, to host this race. Um, they were both uh, tremendous to work work with um, and uh, to enable to get us in there. Um, they're uh, pretty fast flowing trails, single track, um, and it snakes along a ridge overlooking the Clinton River. Um, and it's pretty scenic. It's a pretty cool trail um, if you've never been there. It's not probably great to ride right now because it's not great when it's wet. Uh, so you might want to wait a week for it to dry out before you head out to River Bends. Merrill Trail is race number five. This is another brand new venue for MISCA, so it'll be two weeks in a row. We'll be kind of off our game. Um, and this is one of the crown jewels of the Grand Rapids area. Um, it's a machine-built trail that was built specifically for mountain bikers in mind, um, and it flows and takes you for a fun ride while still introducing some technical challenges in the form of roots and rocks. Um, and there's also some skills things in there, too, from when I wrote it last. Um, what's kind of interesting here, too, uh, Merrill also alternates directions every other day. Uh, they seem to do that a lot on the west side of the state. Um, so, again, that's another one that you want to pre-ride on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or a non-race Sunday uh, if you want to check that trail out uh, before race day. Um, uh, a little bit interesting about Merrill as well, we will be meeting at the Art Band Sports Complex instead of at the trailhead. Um, so that's all in the event details, but uh, they have a lot of parking um, and good fields and things like that that we can use for staging uh, at the Art Band Sports Complex. Um, so, so be prepared for that. And then finally, our championship race presented by Newton Timing is at Bloomer Park. We haven't been at Bloomer Park, I think it was since 2016. Um, and so we're back there. It'll be a lot of fun. We're moving to the front of the park this year. Um, we had always been kind of in the back of the park at the hilltop shelter, um, and we're moving to Bloomer. Uh, Bloomer, again, it's a more technical course, um, and it'll be a really good test for our state championship. We did get some feedback that mid-Michigan was a little bit easy for a state championship last year, so, um, so you're welcome. You got Bloomer for this year. <laughs> So registration, again, it's open now. You can go online and register for races and the annual registration. The annual registration is $50, like I mentioned earlier. Additional, uh, additionally, riders can register for the full six race series, and you'll receive our annual t-shirt for free. Um, so instead of giving a discount on the races, we, we give you a free t-shirt that you can pick up at the first race. Notice that there is a $10 late fee if you register the week of the race online. Um, uh, but we do offer same-day registration as well uh, at that same week of rate. So if you're just not sure if you can make it to the race, um, no fear, you can register up until Thursday at midnight online or on race day. Um, and, you know, that late fee is really there because it's a lot of work with the registration process, with the league model, um, and just in general with, our, with that team management. Um, so we would much prefer you to register online. It's a lot easier for you and us. Um, and also we're going to have some awesome number plates this year again um, uh, that will have the riders' names on them. So as long as you, re as you register by August 1st for the annual registration, you will get a rider plate uh, with your category on it and everything. So I feel like I'm beating the dead horse here with this miscabike.org slash register, but that's where you're going to create your sports sign-up play account, and that's where you're going to register for MISCA. So coaches and riders register annually through the SSU Play app, um, and then you can also register for the entire race series there. You can also register for individual races, clinics, or camps on the site, and it's also where we're going to be collecting volunteer registrations. So you can click on a race, as an adult and register to volunteer in a specific uh, position. All waivers um, are completed during the online registration process. So if you show up on the same day, we recommend you avoid that. You're going to need paper waivers, and you can go to miscabike.org slash resources to find those waivers, but it's pretty cumbersome. It's four pages. There's medical history 
and a lot of information that we need from you. Um, so we definitely recommend that you just go through the Sports Sign Up Play uh, system and get it all out of the way ahead of time. You have, you know, uh, three months, three and a half months until races start. Uh, so I really recommend you go ahead and go through that now. So we're always looking for volunteers. We really depend on the support of volunteers. Typically about 40 volunteers every race day. Um, and that's not even counting the teams that also need parents to help with cooking and uh, bringing items and things like that for the races. Um, but what we ask is that every parent make a commitment to volunteer at one race uh, for the year. And if everybody did that, you know, we have um, 350 kids, you know, maybe 450 this year. Um, that's 450 volunteers divided by the six races. We'll have plenty of uh, volunteers to do everything we need to do. And just to note that race day volunteers are not required to be a coach. Um, so you can be a course marshal and you can help out um, on race day without registering um, as a coach. And we have a few different um, areas that you can volunteer for. Uh, kind of the one that we always need a lot of help with is our course marking and our start and finish setup um, for this. Um, some, of our, our, some of our volunteers will get on a bike and they'll actually go out on the course and help Lisa mark the course. A lot of volunteers will help us um, in the infield area, in the start and finish area, and help us put up our inflatable arches and our snow fence and, um, you know, tape out uh, the race course um, so that we have a nice safe event. Um, so more volunteers means that we can start on time and that everything gets organized and is done well. Um, some venues require parking and traffic control. Um, this is somewhat mixed with course marshals um, for traffic control, uh, but, uh, but some places will need a little bit more help with parking. Uh, this year I don't think we're going to have any issues with that, um, thinking off the top of my head, but uh, maybe at Brighton Recreation Area there might be some parking um, challenges. We always need help with registration, a couple of people throughout the day um, to help uh, make sure everyone's ready to race. Um, there's always somebody who forgets their nameplate um, or, you know, 10, 15, 30 kids that register day of, um, and we got to process all of that information. Course marshals, um, this is where we need stationary and roaming course marshals. Uh, the roaming course marshals are really cool. You get to ride, um, so you may do, you know, three or four laps of the trail that day. Um, so if you want to get your workout in and you also want to volunteer, this is a great um, great spot for you. Uh, you basically will act as a sweep for a different ride category. Um, and that will be every skill level. So it could be our lower elementary kids who are just doing one lap, like maybe four miles, up to our varsity riders who are doing more like three laps, maybe you know 15 to 18 miles total. And then we also need um, help with cleanup. So our goal is always leave no trace. Um, and, you know, the more people that we have, we, uh, we always need help with the course cleanup. Also, um, I did have a note on here. Um, we have a question that came in or a, a reminder. Um, so one area that we also need help with is at the starting line, helping the riders to find their place uh, in the start shoot. Um, and then we may get a little bit more detailed this year on where the riders start. Um, what starting order they're in, um, as opposed to their just their series starting order, we can assign them rows, and as long as we have somebody who can check to make sure everyone's together and they can get um, they can get specify what row to go to, uh, it'll be a lot easier than everybody kind of piling into the chute and then trying to shuffle around to figure out where they're supposed to be in their series order because everyone always tries to get to the front. All right, some upcoming events that we have. Um, we have one more coaches, uh, one more set of coaches clinics scheduled this year at Wallfield Park. Um, that's, again, it's in Kent County near Grand Rapids. We're starting the morning with a basic skills clinic and then going to a ride leading uh, clinic for the afternoon. So if you want to be a level three coach, you would just take both of those um, sessions. If you're only interested in being a level two, 
then you can just do the ride leading. You don't have to be there the entire day. Um, and also, I didn't mention, but a lot of the teams are setting up their own ride leading clinics um, and during like a team practice night. So there may be a night that you kind of cancel practice for the kids, um, or if you have enough coaches uh, to do it who have already gone through the trainings, you can send them off with the kids and then do a, um, do a ride leading clinic with Heather, our director of coaching, um, to get more of your team qualified as a level two, or at least to get more, uh, more coaches through the, the training so they know what to do and they know how to act as a ride leader. Our annual kickoff has changed up a bit this year. It's going to be at D&D Bicycles in Waterford. Um, it's actually going to be a ton of fun. We're doing a fundraiser from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, actually, that entire weekend, a uh, proceed of all sales is going to MISCA um, from the Waterford location. Uh, but on, um, on May 18th, um, sorry, that one, that one bullet point there says May 11th. That should be May 18th. Both uh, events are May 18th at D&D Bicycles in Waterford. Um, Anyways, during the fundraiser, we're going to have uh, um, skills clinics, maintenance classes, um, how to do tune-ups and do roadside or trailside repairs. Um, we're going to have games, and all those are going to kind of rotate throughout that four-hour period. Um, there's also going to be a bike wash um, as well. And then after all that done, we're going to have a meeting and eat some dinner. Um, there's also going to be some awesome swag, I am assured. I know what it is, but I can't give it away. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, but the meeting is going to be similar to this presentation. It'll just be in person. Um, it won't be as detailed because there will be kids present who will not let me talk this long. Uh, uh, so, But we'll make sure that they kind of understand some of the rules changes and things like that as well. We're doing girls rides at Hickory Glen. Um, pretty much it's like one Wednesday a month, May through July. Um, I think it's actually four events, not, not from what I remember. Um, and that'll be a girls only at Hickory Glen Trail in Commerce. We're doing the Milford Bike Festival uh, in Milford. We're doing guided group rides. So the Huron Valley United team is going to um, lead some rides for us. Uh, so that way it's a little bit more guided. You're not just out there on your own trying to do the um, Milford Trail Challenge. That's on June 1st. And then... The um, BICP Level 1 coaches training is actually sold out, but it's June 14th through the 16th, uh, and we're hosting that at Brighton Recreation Area and Hometown Bicycles. In addition to those, we have um, some kids' clinics and camps coming up, too. So we have elementary girls and elementary students on June 1st, and then we have middle school and high school girls and students on June 2nd. And then we're having a girls' camp on June 29th, um, and all of those are actually at Brighton Recreation Area. Now I wanted to take a moment to recognize um, these awesome businesses who are supporting MISCA's mission. Please support these awesome sponsors. Um, shop at their bike shops visit their websites, become members of their organizations, use their products, and support these businesses. First, d, &D Bicycles is our pro-level sponsor. Um, that's our lead sponsor for MISCA. And they're also the title sponsor of the d, &D Bicycles 2019 MISCA Race Series. Cycle Therapy, Fraser Bicycle, Wheels in Motion, and Newton Timing have all taken on one race each to be the title sponsor. Psychotherapy Addison Oaks, Fraser Bicycle River Bends, Wheels in Motion Brighton Rec Area, and Newton Timing for the third year in a row is doing our state championship this year at Bloomer Park. Primal is sponsoring our leaders' jerseys again this year, KLM Bike and Fitness, Bloomer Cycle Across, and West, West Michigan Mountain Biking Alliance are all coming in at our expert level. Then we have Discover Kalamazoo, KOM Cycling, Macomb Bike and Fitness, Giant and Live, Michigan Bicycle Racing Association, Toomey Software, the West Michigan Sports Commission, and the League of Michigan Bicyclists all in at our varsity level support. iDashboards is a JV level supporter. And then we have Meyer, Cliff Bar, AppSapure, 
the National Mountain Bike Patrol, CycleFit, Regeared, DL Graphics, and the Michigan Mountain Biking Association, all providing in-kind support to the organization. And we couldn't do our scholarship funds and kind of keep our fees low for the year for all the kids if we didn't have um, the support of our sponsors. All right, so I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, just about an hour, and with our sound uh, issue that we had, it probably would have been right about an hour. So that's really good. Um, if you have any additional questions that we haven't answered yet, please type them into the questions box. I want to have a little bit of a dialogue here um, and answer any questions or concerns that you have. Um, if it's something that I can't answer today, I will take it offline. Uh, I might ask you for an email address, and we can talk and chat um, later on. Uh, but please type your questions in the box. Um, if you want to email me, feel free. Um, I'm Sean Warren, swarren at miscabike.org. Um, if you're interested in volunteering and getting more involved with MISCA, email volunteer at miscabike.org. Jody Giles is our volunteer coordinator. Um, if you just have any in general information that you want to send to us, um, you don't want just to go to me, you can email the entire board. We have a nine-member board, um, and they will all get that email if you email board at miscabike.org. So we do have a couple of questions that came in. <clears throat> okay, so what is the best way to communicate with a point of contact for each team? I have a lower elementary rider, and I'm not sure who has lower elementary teams. Um, could you type in the name or where you live, like maybe your city name, school district, something like that, and that will help me. I can kind of point you in the right direction. Um, but if you go to miscabike.org slash teams, there's a map there, the map that I showed earlier on the screen. And if you click on any of the dots on the map, you will get the name and email address for who you should contact. Um, and email is really just the best way to contact them because all the coaches have day jobs. Um, and so if you try calling them, you know, they're probably not going to answer anyways. So it's better just to email them um, and, and you'll definitely get a response. Additionally, there are links on that page and they may have Facebook groups or things like that that you can ask to join as well. <clears throat> so the answer to what city or school district was Brighton, and Brighton definitely has a ton of kids um, on their team. So you would be welcome to join their team uh, with elementary writers. All right, that was the only question that I got. So if anybody else has questions, please feel free to type them in. Um, again, I would... Uh, Love to take those questions just so that everybody kind of learns from, from your question that you might have. All right. I'm not seeing any more questions. So with that, I'll go ahead and close this webinar. Thank you guys so much for volunteering to be part of MISCA. Um, just like we can't do it without the sponsors, we cannot do it without our coaches. Um, so we, we greatly appreciate you volunteering your time. And I know that we put a bunch of requirements uh, in, in through Matthew last year, and you know, we're molding them again this year. So we greatly appreciate what you do for us, and, and we understand that our growth is 100% um, because our coaches are dedicated to the growth of youth cycling in Michigan. So again, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you for everybody who's watching the recording uh, after the fact, um, and we'll uh, see you out on the trail. Thank you. <clears throat>